What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Joe Talks About Nutrition Topics and discusses nutrition misconceptions that she's learned and researched over the years. For today's episode, we are going to be talking about food and what happens once it enters our body and before it leaves through our butt. Aside from studying the components of food, we also study how the body utilizes this food or digestion and metabolism. So we're just going to talk about the basics so we can familiarize ourselves with it. Let's get talking. Digestion. Digestion refers to how our body processes the food through the gastrointestinal tract and how it eliminates food waste. Digestion is done thanks to our incredibly amazing digestive system. The digestive process begins with ingestion, which is basically taking food through our mouths. So of course the organs involved here is our mouth or our oral cavity. The next step in the digestive process is propulsion or the movement of food. This occurs from the mouth to the pharynx, which is the opening of our mouth to the esophagus, this tube that connects the pharynx to the stomach. Alongside propulsion usually comes mechanical digestion, which is the chewing, churning, and segmentation of our food. Kind of a preview of what happens in the rest of the digestive process because the big chunks of food, we chomp them down into smaller parts, so the rest of our body has an easier time using it. So of course this occurs in the mouth as well as the esophagus and the stomach. Our stomach is a J-shaped organ. It can hold from 1.5 to 4 liters of food. Usually holds this food for about 4 hours. How does that tiny stomach hold so much food. Our stomachs are quite flexible. And this is mostly because the muscle tissues in our stomach are shaped in ridges. That way it allows for more surface area. After mechanical digestion, there comes chemical digestion, which is the use of enzymes and acids so that we can digest the food. This occurs mostly in the stomach, but also in the intestines. Our stomach is the one that releases that hydrochloric acid, so it's very acidic. After chemical digestion comes absorption. This is the part where the body gets the nutrients from the food and transfers it to the blood, the lymph, and other parts of the body that needs it. A small amount of this occurs in the stomach, but most of it occurs in our small and large intestine. So our small intestine is 20 feet long. 20 feet of your small intestine is right there. Our stomach absorbs alcohol and aspirin, while the small intestine absorbs your macronutrients, your micronutrients, and water. The large intestine is only 5 feet long. It's called large intestine due to its circumference, because it has a larger circumference than the small intestine. It's not called long and short intestine. It absorbs mainly your remaining potassium and sodium, as well as the rest of the water. We should have a regular pooping schedule. It is good for you. It's also known as the elimination of undigested product, like your insoluble fiber. And this usually happens through your rectum. So before elimination out of your butt, the undigested products usually stay in your large intestine. So if you really need to poop, go poop. Don't let it stay in your large intestine and collect some bacteria. It could cause something terrible. Part of our digestive system is also the accessory organs that help with giving us some enzymes and hormones. So these organs are your salivary glands, the liver, the pancreas, as well as the gallbladder. Now that we have the gist of digestion, it's time that we talk about metabolism. Metabolism is a never-ending series of chemical processes that occur in the cells of our body. Metabolism is basically how we digest the foods that we intake so that our body can use the energy that it contains. Metabolism helps us get the most from the food that we consume. Metabolism is a combination of two processes that are quite contradicting, and this is catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is breaking down. Anabolism is the building up or making or repairing of cells. We want a little way to remember it. Catabolism, cut, cut breakdown, cut, cut, while well, anabolism is not cutting. So if we want to put that together, so our body will break down the protein into amino acids for catabolism, and then we'll build up your muscles through anabolism. Certain components of metabolism are set from birth, but there are ways that we can speed up and slow down our metabolism. You can't ruin your metabolism. You can only slow it down or speed it up. So your metabolism adapts to its current environment. And a slower metabolism usually comes from people who eat less. Speeding up your metabolism can be done by eating more. But gaining muscle will help your metabolism speed up because 10 pounds of muscle burns about 50 calories in a day at rest, while 10 pounds of fat burns only 20 calories. That's 
an approximation. Eating late at night will screw up my metabolism and make me gain weight. The thing about snacking at night is sometimes we usually do this uncontrollably, mindlessly, and we just eat whatever we want and keep snacking. And this excess food usually leads to weight gain. The number and kind of calories you're eating is usually what matters and not when you're eating it. Skipping meals slow down my metabolism. A long-term calorie deficit or a long-term of starving your body will slow down your metabolism. Usually what happens is when people skip a meal, they end up binging and then they gain weight. Skipping meals will only slow down your metabolism if you do it a lot through a long period of time. Because when you're eating less, our body thinks, oh, we must be in some sort of starvation mode where not a lot of food will be coming. So in order to conserve more energy, your metabolism slows down. But skipping one meal by accident or by choice will not slow down your metabolism. Eating smaller meals will speed up my metabolism and make me lose weight. Whether you eat three big meals or six small meals, it will have the same effect on your metabolism. The size of your meals depends on you, what you're more comfortable with. If you like big meals to really satisfy you, or if you want small meals to keep you going through the day, it won't affect your metabolism as much as you think. Metabolism shuts down at a certain age. While metabolism does slow down as you age, it does not just quit and completely stop. It's not exactly an incredibly significant amount. Other things that slow down your metabolism is inactivity, body composition, loss of muscle, hormones. Spicy food boosts the metabolism. A lot of weight loss hacks include you eating spicy food to make you speed up your metabolism. And I think this is mostly because we feel like we're sweating and we just had a workout after eating spicy food. It does give you a bump of energy expenditure, but not big enough to last you your lifetime and speed up your whole metabolism. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Till the next one, stay fab and eat for your body.